Today on the Extreme Channel, we're going to look at this older piece from XM Studios. There's three reasons we're going to review this guy. Stay tuned to find out why. Welcome to the Extreme Channel. My name is Mr. X. A big part of this channel is all about extreme collectibles, high-end stuff, especially statues. If you like that kind of stuff, make sure you hit that like button because you can win one of these two Venom statues. We also have monthly giveaways on the 15th of every month. All you have to do to enter is comment on a video. The more videos you comment on, the more chances you have to win. Now I know you're probably wondering, why are my hands underneath the table? That's none of your business. You're also probably wondering, what are the three reasons we're looking at this older piece? Well, there's probably more than three, but first of all, as you guys know, Venom 2 will hopefully come out sometime this year, dependent on what Hollywood does with the whole Kabali virus. Number two, I honestly think this may be XM Studios' most underrated piece. I think there's one other piece that beats it. And lastly, I am actually getting in a new Carnage statue. That's right. I think this one's amazing, but I have another one on order. So let's go ahead and get started. So a little bit about Carnage. If you don't know who Carnage is, I'm not sure why you tuned in, but I appreciate it. Carnage is an offspring of Venom. He's Venom's child? No. So the Venom suit, or the symbiote, that Eddie Brock wears was split up between quite a few different characters. And Carnage was one of them, and it found its way into the hands of a crazy serial killer. Thus Carnage. Now some other pieces, I actually have another statue I'm ordering right here. Check this out. This is a custom Scream statue. Kind of along the same storyline, not as big of a character as Carnage, but I'm really excited to add that as well. And I know what you're thinking. If you're a big subscriber to the channel, you know, Mr. X, you're getting away from Spider-Man. Well, I changed my mind. If you recall, I'm moving to a much bigger office, gonna do the Spider-Man display there, which kind of makes me regret that I actually sold Scorpion. But I couldn't resist, I was getting such a good price on him. So Carnage is gonna be featured by Woody Harrelson in the upcoming Venom 2 movie, and everyone's really excited about that. Woody Harrelson, amazing actor, and I think he can actually take on the role of a sadistic serial killer really well. So I really look forward to that, but I also really enjoy the comic version of Carnage, which is what this is. So this is made by XM Studios, that's the company. This is one fourth scale. You know what that means, Cody. XM Studios made 800 of these and they retailed right around a thousand Singapore dollars, which is like 760 US dollars. And realistically, you can get him shipped for about that price nowadays. For some reason, he's a really underrated piece and I'm not sure why because I think he's amazing, which we're gonna find out in the review today. I think the only XM Studios piece that is more underrated is the Iron Fist. Check this guy out right here. And what's funny is both of these were sculpted by some of the best in the business. Iron Fist was Daniel Bell and this one was Caleb. I never say his last name because I can't pronounce it, but, but he is one of my favorites sculpting some of the most amazing pieces out there. So as I said, I wanted to review them. I don't need two different Carnages, but there's another custom Carnage that I bought that'll come sometime in the next six to 12 months. Here's a picture of it right here. It just looks amazing. It looks just as good as this. We will definitely do an Extrumble, which is a statue comparison video between the two, but I really, really look forward to getting that guy. But especially looking at him now, pulling him out for the review, I don't think I wanna let him go. So let's dive right into why I think he's so great. And let's start with concept. Now what's interesting with this guy, he has a lot of switch outs which we're gonna talk about in design and they alter the concept slightly but not too much. But what I really like is whenever you have a Spider-Man character, he's usually on a rooftop because that's where Spider-Man hangs out and this is no exception. He is on top of presumably a cathedral or church steeple and he's crawling along the side of it. I somewhat question the scale of the church steeple. It looks a little bit small. But he's kind of prowling on it. Looks like he's uh, laying in wait. I think that's what they call it. Laying in wait to kill his victim, to maybe sneak up on Spider-Man. And his suit is moving. They actually almost made it look like it's moving, which we'll talk more about in paint and sculpt. But uh, there's pieces coming out. There's pieces going on the building. He's altering his hands, depending which switch out you have on him. And he just looks crazy and sadistic and scary. Very well done. So I think they captured a lot of things with the concept. One, they got him in Spider-Man's land. Up high, like you see Venom on bell towers. They got him uh, with his costume moving and changing. A lot of times he's known as having an ax for a hand, uh, really using that symbiote to his power. 
Uh, they got him looking crazy and uh, sadistic, as I said. So I think they knocked everything out of the park. Um, while this is more of a design thing, I'm gonna kind of include it in concept. The cathedral tower, the windows, if you look at it, it's just too small. It just is. I think it's scaled too small. I think they should have done something differently with that. So I think that knocks it down to a four out of five instead of a perfect concept. It's a rail on the concept. When talking about design, since I've had them for so long, I honestly don't remember all the different pieces. I do remember a few things. I remember there are a ton of switch outs, which we're gonna look at. I remember all these black tendrils are all inserted separately, which was a pain in the ass. Uh, they are color coded, but some of it didn't work and you couldn't tell which direction. I don't even have all of them in because I couldn't figure it out. But unless you're looking really close, you don't know that. One other big issue is his arms. So he has three pairs of arms, three right arms, three left arms. All of them have different tendrils. So you have all these extra tendrils. So big, big pain in the ass. However, look what it did. It made it look awesome. So first of all, we talked about the uh, scale of this. Carnage looks like he's properly scaled. Uh, he's not a bigger character like Venom, but he is of decent size. He's a little bit bigger than Spider-Man, I believe and this is uh, very true on this. The scale of the building we already talked about is off, but I do like the fact that the displayability is good. You can um, kind of have this jut out and have some open room right here for other characters, so it doesn't take up too much of a, a footprint. The fact that they were able to mix in the tendrils so it looks like it's moving is huge to me. I think that's an awesome design aspect. Uh, some of the things you're gonna see in Paint and Sculpt, the symbiote costume is actually running off onto the building. Uh, really makes it feel like it's alive. Let's talk about the switch outs. And before I show you, I'm gonna show you some stock photos because some of them I knew I'd never use. I just left in the box years ago. Let's look at his portraits. First, he has a classic Carnage portrait. This is my favorite. As I said, it's kind of classic. Nothing really crazy going on. Next one is he has one with a tongue out. This is one I left in the box, as you see. Here's a stock photo. Not a big fan of this at all. To me, Venom is the tongue guy. That's what she said. And last is a transformation portrait, which I love that they included this. However, when we get to the paint and sculpt on this, I'm not a huge fan. With his arms, the positions are different, but essentially each one you have three different switch out options. You can put large stabbing weapons slash hooks on both of them. And these look great. They're badass. He has these crazy long fingers you can also put on each hand. And then he has normal hands as well, and these are the ones I left in the box. Another interesting fact about this is with all these switch outs in a suit, you're like, where are the seam lines? Here's some pictures. You don't see them. That is incredibly genius on their part in my opinion. So really some incredible stuff here. I think I have to give the design a uh, four out of five as well. I think the tendrils are a pain in the ass, but they work really well. I love all the different switch outs and how they blend in. The fact that the building's underscaled again uh, kind of knocks it down in this category. Now we're gonna dive into paint and sculpt, and with Carnage, you know, there's some other options out there, not very many, but the old Sideshow one. The biggest complaint I've heard about this guy is how shiny and uh, glistening he is. A lot of people don't like it moist. I do. But let's start on the base. The base, to me, is very okay. There's not a lot of detail in here. I appreciate the uh, fact that they put in the windows and the crucifixes. But there's not a lot of texture on here. There's not a lot of colorization or shading. It's very plain, very boring. And I've never really looked at it this close because usually you're looking at the character. Check out where Carnage is on the building. This is where you see the symbiote running over. I really like this. I like the fact that it looks like it's moving. It looks like it's dripping down. It's a little bit darker red mixed in with some black uh, colors. I like this a lot. Let's look at all those tendrils really quick. Now, most of these that you're looking at now, as I said, they're actually extensions you input into the body. They have this nice shine effect to them. And I like how they contoured them in tw tons of different directions, some of them overlapping each other. And some of them I just may have inserted incorrectly. 
And then you see the black tendrils that are actually part of his body. So these aren't inserted, but they're uh, same kind of design. They're moving, they're overlapping. And then when you look at the costume itself, you really can't see a ton of anatomy. The basic anatomy is definitely there, but he just looks like a normal guy, not a ton of muscle. But this almost looks like it's layered. The red aspects are layered, not only uh, underneath the black uh, symbiote stuff, but uh, layered on each other. It looks like uh, this kind of old, nasty skin you'd see on a monster, which I think adds to the scariness of Carnage. Kind of just showing you sh some shots all over. And it has that uh, reflective uh, glistening effect. Not, I wouldn't really call it moist, but it is a glistening effect. Check out the hook. This is so badass. It's coming out in like four or five different places. Definitely a cool stabbing weapon. Some T-1000 crap going on here. Here's his hand with the long fingers. This is how I have him displayed with the hook you just looked at and this. To me, this is the best of both worlds, but he also looks great with two hooks. I like how the black is uh, covering the red part on the fingers. Let's move to his transformation portrait. Again, I like the concept of this, but the uh, paint and sculpt is very lacking. I think it's too all over the place. I think they tried to go too far. The skin textures, the human skin textures are just very plain. It just looks funny too. It's hard to explain. I appreciate the idea, but just not the execution. I think their Venom transformation portrait is phenomenal on their uh, XM Studios one. I like that they gave the option though. I think that's a very solid aspect. XM likes their switch outs. But here's um, the regular portrait, my favorite one. Very, very cool. A lot of the same of what we've seen throughout the costume, but a few differences. So first, uh, you obviously see the eyes. It has this black shading where Venom traditionally has the blue shading on it. I like that there's almost uh, no nose showing and his teeth really look like part of the costume. Uh, it kind of blends in with the black. They're not separate where Venoms traditionally are. Then if you see the inside of the tongue here has this uh, texturized surface and uh, that does have a moist effect on it. Looks really cool. So when rating the paint and sculpt, this is one where I think the base would get a different score than the character, but we're gonna try and do it all together. That's what she said. That's three. Is it too much? That's what she said. <laughs> I think because of the lack of colors on the base, um, and they didn't have to have a ton of different colors on Carnage. I think it's a very nice score on the paint. It's a three out of five. If they'd done more with the base, I think it, it would have knocked it up a score. However, I'm going to give the sculpt a four out of five. I think just he's amazing. Carnage is amazing, everything that's going on with him. Typically, we don't look at value for old pieces, but, but just in my opinion, he's a very good value, so we're not gonna rank it. If you can pick him up for a lower price, I definitely would. I've never seen the Sideshow one in person. Here's a picture of it, the Sideshow Comiquette. But I'm just not a fan of that. I don't know why, but I absolutely love this one. I did used to own the Sideshow Premium Format here, and I was not a fan at all. I think I had it for like three months and then sold it off. So overall score for this guy, I, in my opinion, I think he's a rail. He's a four out of five. I'm a big, big fan of this piece. I don't know why I bought that custom one. Yeah, I do, because it looks amazing. And uh, maybe um, it, it probably will unseat this, which kind of excites me. Not in that way. Well, kind of. But uh, if you want to know how to win those Venom statues, it's really easy. First, make sure you've liked this video. Second, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And third, make sure you've hit that bell notification so you know when that video drops. Otherwise, leave a comment in this video of what you think of this piece, how many chest hairs you currently have, or uh, how often you shave your ass, just something, and that'll enter you into the monthly giveaway. But I really appreciate you guys watching. As always, stay tuned for some close-ups, and I'll talk to you later. Take care. Thank you.
Thank you.